Welcome to Focus on Seniors, a television show sponsored by Helping Seniors of Brevard County, Florida. The show is designed to make you aware of senior issues, needs, and resources available to help us age in place and with dignity. This show will help you as you develop your own aging and care plan. I'm Joe Steckler. Welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County a show designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plan. Our topic for today is an overview of assisted living facility care. Mary Beth Carley is with me in the studio and Mary Beth is the marketing director for Town Square and Julie Anderson, executive director for health services, Wustoff Health Systems. Welcome. Julie, welcome, Mary Beth. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I want to talk just a second, folks, before we uh, I start my interview of Julie and Mary Beth. Prior to the start of the show, we had a discussion on backgrounds and how these two ladies got involved in senior care. And if we could include that as part of this television show, I would think you would both you you our listeners would understand why I get excited about the people that we have as guests on our shows to help you understand how you can help develop your own aging and care plans. And I think it's extremely important, Julie and Mary Beth, that our viewers do understand uh, that both of you bring a lot more than normal expertise and experience to the topic we're talking about today. So, Julie, first I'll start with you, um, or maybe Mary Beth, whoever would be best to answer. My first question is, uh, you know, what are assisted living facilities? What's, what's, Mary Beth, you're the marketing director. An assisted living facility is um, basically a place where seniors come to live when they're in need of assistance with activities of daily living. It's a long term, but what it really means is that at some point in our lives, um, living in our home really isn't the best option anymore. So we have families, um, and also persons coming to our facility to find out what type of care is available. And we work with their uh, physician to find out ways that we can help them remain independent. So our whole goal of assisted living is to help people age in place for the time that they have left to live. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place. You know, <clears throat> I think this, um, we've grown up with a mindset in the United States in that uh, in the old days, people were cared for in their homes. The family took care of them. Mm -hmm. And then we had a place called a nursing home. Right. And right. they were sort of two very, very opposites. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've developed the sort of in-between care. Mm -hmm. uh, like while people are still in their homes, you can, you can have skilled nursing care, you can have home care, which is not skilled, come in and help take care of a person. And you can send the people to daycares, they, they can socialize, and that's a big part of what you do at Town Square is the socialization. And I want to talk about that because too many people have right. the picture right. that uh, people in an assisted living facility are like they are in a nursing home. They're, they're parked in a wheelchair someplace, and that's not true. No, it's the opposite of that. Yeah, right. It is, and it's, it's a fallacy that we can dispel when they come for a tour. But I think oftentimes we do have that picture in our mind of those two options, home and nursing home. And nursing home really isn't where most people need to go anymore. So the type of care that we provide is based on their individual needs. So it can start out at one level, but then they can age in place. So yes, many, many people want to be in their home, but because families are working now, children maybe don't have the option to help care for their parents anymore because they're working longer. Right. Um, and I think that that's really what it boils down to. So I, that's why I think one of the um, main things that I see these days are family members coming in search for a place for mom and dad. Julia is a medical, uh, is the executive director for, for uh, health services for the Wistoff system. Uh, how do you feel about what Mary Beth had just said? Well, I think there's a place for all services, you know, yeah. and so I oversee home care, hospice, uh, the skilled nursing facility and the assisted living and I feel like all those pieces of the puzzle are very important to have a holistic view to taking care of seniors. 
So at one point, someone may want home care at the home, and then they get to a point where they may need assisted living, and then they get to a point where assisted living is no longer appropriate due to some medical conditions, and they need skilled nursing. And then obviously at the end of their um, time here on Earth, they may need hospice support, which is such a wonderful thing. And I know in in, in the future, you're going to be discussing that in depth. So, yes. uh, you know. so I think Wustoff has a a continuum of care, and that's really kind of the, the proponent that I look at. We have two hospitals. We have all the services that I've just discussed. We can take care of someone from the time they're in the hospital to the time they um, uh, time expire. expire. Yeah. Yes. And you, know, it's, that, you can use the word. Death is something that, that uh, if you truly believe, if you are, a, and I, I, you know, I, I can use the word Christian, um, if you truly believe that uh, there is there is life after death, and um, we're here for a certain period of time, but we're someplace else, and I hope I'm in the right place into someplace else that's a better place than it is here. Yeah, I think that's so important because I think that it's all about wellness. It's all about taking care of that person from their health care needs, to their education, to their support. All those things are really important. I think to help the families through with the senior and help them understand what's going on, we're here really to help them understand as health care changes too. Yes. So as, they ch as it changes, we need to be ready so that we can help those seniors and families through that. And I feel like Wustoff is ready for that. Um, and I feel like um, we're ready and ready to help those seniors out in Brevard County. Well, so. I, I think that's just one of the purpose of all these television shows that we're doing that will be on a demand channel. So people can, can push a button theoretically on our website and say, I want to know about hospice. I want to know about sister living care. I want to know about nursing home care. I want to know about how I, I can keep my heart healthy. All these things we need, and, and women certainly need to understand more about having a healthy heart. And that's something we're going to talk about also. But Mary Beth, I think one of the things that, uh, that uh, the viewers need to understand is the differences in assisted living facility licenses. That's a very good point. We have a system of assisted living with three separate types of license. There's a standard license, an LNS license, limited nursing services, and then there's an ECC license and it stands for Extended Congregate Care. It is the license that we hold at Town Square, and it really is the only license, if you will, that affords aging in place. It's um, something that we put on our level of care sheet when they come for a tour, because ECC services refer to specific nursing services, something as simple as oxygen care, anti-embolism stockings, um, and there's a whole list of other skilled, right. no, they're not all skilled services, but if you're not licensed with an ECC license for something as simple as oxygen care, and down the road, you're not completely independent with that activity. If you are at a standard or LNS licensed assisted living facility, that staff, even though that's within their scope of practice if they have a nurse available, they're not licensed to perform that function for you. So and what's important about that is that they might want to stay in that assisted living right. facility that they're in, and they right. cannot do it because right. the facility cannot legally keep them there, so right. they transfer them to a nursing home. And also you should be aware, too, when you're going on these tours and you're planning, you may not need assisted living today, but you know what medical conditions you have, you know what the possibilities if you age, what you might be encountering with a COPD, for example, with oxygen care. So I think it's really important for people to know that if you are um, exploring options for the future or you need something like this right now, licensure is very important. It is because one thing that uh, senior people and people as we age, uh, we get very comfortable in a place and we don't want to pick up and move. Right. So that's why right. it's so good to be in a place that could provide the continuum of care that, right. that they're going to have to be able right. to access. And in an assisted living facility, you bring your own things with you. So your home, really where you are right now with your furniture and your possessions, all of that really comes with you. So the only thing that changes in an assisted living scenario is your locale. Your support system is there for you, 
And then that aging in place, what we're talking about, is extremely important because, like you say, seniors have been in their home oftentimes 20, 50 years. You don't want to be going to one facility and then down the road having to move right. again. Yeah. Let's talk for a minute about the, the types of services that you provide at Town Square. And I think people need to understand what ties Town Square is because I have four things I wanted to talk yes. about under Town Square. Yes. And I, I want to talk about diet, exercise, socialization, because that's important. So let's, yes. let's talk a little bit about Town Square. You started, Mary Beth, you're the market director, and then Julie, you're the, you're the boss. So you can tell where Mary Beth is wrong, okay? Well, we, we address those. There's actually four components. The fourth is also cross-training your brain. And I think that that's very important, too. But when you're um, a senior, you should be really concerned about what you put into your body. Obviously, diet is very important. At Town Square, we provide all the meals for our residents. So it's going to be fresh fruits, vegetables, you know, fish, all these types of things that we really want to encourage people to eat. But in the end, they make their own decisions. It's assisted living, so we're not forcing people to choose what they eat. But we offer a healthy diet. Um, with regard to exercise, there are opportunities every single day. Um, we do that at 9.30 in the morning, an exercise class. So we encourage people to be working on their upper body strength, especially because as you age, your lower body often tends to get a little bit weaker, so we're going to work on upper body as well as lower body. Now let me interrupt you. There's the mm -hmm. second there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this during this show because I, I know what you can do. I have been in so many assisted living facilities where they have the people come out and they sit in the couches, and they'll sit there and they'll do an arm exercise like this, and they'll do this. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that's wrong or bad because right. some people can't do more than that. Right. But you have, and I've seen it. You had an activity director at uh, Town Square that that woman gets out there and she's going up and down the aisles and she's and if, if somebody's not doing something, she she is energetic enough. She gets them to do it. Yeah. It's knowing how to do something. And that's that's why I wanted to have the Town Square show here, because I think it, it shows viewers that that there's more to assisted living and nursing care that went, and we're going to oh, do the absolutely. same thing when we have the nursing show because we're going to use your rehabilitation center to talk about that. Now, I'm sorry, you no, see if you can remember where you are. You're right. We're passionate about what we do, and Elizabeth Burbeck is our activities director. Yes. She's been there for about seven years, and she is very interested in the lives of our residents, and it goes beyond activities. So um, she's wonderful. Can't say enough about her. And she really does all of the activity planning, 60% of the residents' time, is spent in activities. So we offer um, socialization not just at mealtime because we want people to come out of their apartments. So we provide um, music three to five times per week. Uh, cross training the brain refers to the types of activities that are provided. We have uh, uh, quite a few residents who are very into current events. So we have a headline news activity where they come out and they're talking about what's going on in the world today. Elizabeth is very up in, uh, into that activity. And we want to um, encourage people to do the type of things that they did when they were home. Maybe they don't sew anymore in their home. So we have a sewing group. We have a gal who comes in who has a business. This is what she does for her living. And she comes and she donates her time to spend with the residents that at one time sewed and maybe aren't doing that anymore. Do you actually use machines? We do have a machine, yes. And then they're hand stitching. I think they're working on a quilt right now. So that's, that's a wonderful thing. So much um, of what seniors have, have done in the past, they stopped doing for one reason or another. So when you come to Town Square, we try to find out a little bit about you. What are the things that you enjoyed at one point? And then we want to offer you those activities so that you can enjoy them again. It's interesting because when you talk about sewing machine, you didn't ask that question. I remember a person many, many years ago that was trying to learn how to sew and uh, they couldn't sew a straight line. I sat down to the machine and sewed a straight line, and that person never forgave me for doing that. <laughs> but uh, it, it's interesting because yeah. there's so many stories as we live our life that uh, we can relate to, to how we would want a loved one to be placed someplace mm -hmm. that we would feel comfortable. As the uh, as the boss, Julie, how, how do you <laughs> how do you feel about what Mary Beth is talking about? Because you've seen it. Absolutely, I, I think that. Town Square and all our services that we staff provide that not just the building, not just the apartment, but we have staff that really care. And Elizabeth and Mary Beth are 
two of those individuals of many, um, make them feel comfortable, listen to them, hold their hands. I, I think it's important to be heard, and I think, and to respect those individuals of their past. And I think that's what Mary Beth is talking about. You need to respect those individuals. You know, if they were a colonel, call them colonel. Yeah. If they, you know, all those things are so important. And I think that all culminates into an environment that helps those individuals feel safe and helps them to grow. Because I know my mom at home didn't, uh, used to be a painter, and she quit painting. But now that she's part of a seniors group, and it, um, she now paints again. So I think it's the same idea that she's talking about with the sewing. I what think kind of artist is she? Is she's an oil painter. So is, is she pretty good? Um, yes, she is, actually. Would she be willing to do a piece for us for our art show in the, uh, later in this year? Oh, well, I'm sure she would. She would love that. It would be a good goal for her. I think it would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. It's, it's, you know this, and we have shows like this. Okay. It's not just trying to get information to do, viewer. Yeah. It's... It's an interaction on this set because the way we interact comes across to the viewers and they can see that both of you enjoy what you're doing. And um, there is no, there is no um, substitute for interest and love. And I remember when I used to run the Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation, I would not hire a worker in a daycare if they could not greet the people in Maring without giving them a hug. If they could not hug those people, mm -hmm. they did not work for me. Now, I, mean, I made that a criteria, and I guess that, that legally I could do that. But I think in this business, you have to have a passion, and it can't be an overpassion, because you can go the other way, and you've seen it, Mary Beth, and you've seen it too, Julie. Mm -hmm. If you go overboard and you become too close to the people, yeah. it, it, it detracts from your ability, I think, to care for them. A question I have, you kept talking about it, um, and I, I don't want to embarrass you, but uh, the staffing ratios are something like 3.1 to 1, or something like that? Well, the way we um, handle staff ratios, we have to look at what percentage of our residents require what level of care. Okay. Okay, so when you look at the town square, for example, when you, when you have somebody on a level three care, it's our own terminology. Every facility has their own terminology with regard to level of care. That might mean uh, someone might need help with their medication, so we provide that through our nursing staff. If somebody has a dementia type of diagnosis or for some reason or another they need help with their medication, that would be considered part of level three care along with maybe an AM assist and a PM assist, someone to come in in the morning to help them get up, get dressed, possibly shower if that's um, a service that they need. All of that level of care, level three care, when we look at our staffing ratio, let's say I have 95 residents, about 30 of those right now require level three care. Everyone else is below that level. So we make sure that we have adequate, adequate staff uh, in the morning especially and in the evening right. for those folks. Why who, is that? Logically, so, why is it? Those are the, the really times of the day that our staff is most busy, helping people get up, get dressed, get showered, etc. And then in the evening, the same thing, get ready for bed. There was one word I wanted you to mention you didn't do it. What was it? <laughs> I have no remember? idea. <laughs> Eat. Eat. Okay. Uh, a big concern that so many families have when a person is in an assisted living facility or a nursing home, is that um, the um, the person that they placed there are they are they receiving a correct diet or and more importantly are they eating what they're given? It's so and, important. Um, yes. Yeah, that, that's a concern. Hey, okay. how do you at Town Square determine uh, which people might need some people need hands-on feeding? That's something that we observe over a period of time. It generally isn't something that happens overnight. When you come to an assisted living facility, the first thing we do is we're in touch with your primary care physician with regard to all of your diagnosis, all the medications that you're on, and then the physician also indicates what you're independent with, what you might need some help or total help with. At that point, we assign a level of care, and the staff knows what your care needs are, and that's on the plan. So at some point, if you're unable to feed yourself, it might be because you have a Parkinson's diagnosis or something else going on that we've been really on top of and we know when that's going to happen. 
And then at that point, there's a CNA that would be um, assigned to help that person at the table. Julie, you have anything else that you would add to that? Which, what Mary no, I think Mary Beth said it very nicely. I, I, think, know, I know she did. I think to, you said a registered dietitian, obviously, oversees all the diets, and they sign off on the menu and the diets. And, and the physician is just one piece of that, you know, the clinical dietitian, the director in the kitchen, the cook, and also the person out in the dining room, because with our restaurant-style dining, we want to make sure those um, residents that – that need assistance are happy with the food that they're served because you can assist someone to eat, but you want to make sure the food is appealing and that they 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 want to eat the food. So you want to make sure, even though you're following the medical diet and all that, you want to make sure that the food is appealing to them and all that because sometimes they may have food that's more chopped up or different than your normal diet. The reason I ask a question is that... Uh well, my primary 38 years of military service was as a submarine officer. My last two years in the Navy, I was uh, uh, the chief of naval personnel called me up because uh, I had worked for him as well as for the uh, chief of naval operations. I had worked for both those men. And one of them asked me what I wanted to do for my last job in the Navy. I said, I don't want to work for anybody. I want to be my own boss. He said, would you work for me? I said, yes. So he gave me command of the Navy retirement home in Gulfport, Mississippi. I took care of 550 people. I had a 57-bed assisted care floor. and had a 60-bed hospital. I had three doctors and 33 nurses that worked for me. So and every week we had a, um, a uh, session and, a, and we had a huge round conference table. And we had uh, about 10, 12 people that were directly in, involved with the care of the people. And we had uh, different people brought up as to whether they could be, should be moved from a well room to an assisted care floor or maybe to the hospital section, which in, in reality was a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I saw what the different elements of care could do. So and, I, and I understand, but I understand what I have heard both of you say during this session today, that uh, you're continually watching the people. And I think that's, that's extremely important for families to know it's not just that they're, they're placed there and they exist there. It's and so important because when they go out to their physicians, they're going to go with a list of their medications, and any notations that the doctor makes when they return will go into their chart that we keep at Town Square. So all of their uh, medical information is kept in one place, and I think that um, enables us to really get a handle of what particular person, what they're going through at that time. Do you uh, chart their medical progress? We have an evaluation when you first come in, okay. and then yes, depending upon what type of uh, medical care you need, oftentimes we are charting if they have an ECC service, and um, Julie can tell you all about charting and things like that. She's got the clinical background that I do not. Okay. No, I, I think it's important for viewers to know this, Julie, because it's, it's another side of what you do at Town Square, and that's why, that's why we're, we picked you all to do this. Well, obviously, when you go into Town Square, it doesn't look like a medical model at all. So we make sure that it's re it's a relaxing kind of resort kind of environment. So basically, what we do when someone comes in is we evaluate them to make sure they're appropriate. And then going forward, we are um, doing those medical assessments, you know, where if they have a change in condition, they have a skin tear, anything like that, we're documenting okay. how we're treating them and and um, what we're doing. So any kind of change. If the doctor orders a new medication, we're making sure we document that. How, how about, uh, how often do you have a set time that you meet with families? Um, we do, at Town Square we do initially, and then as there's a change in condition. Um, we also have family council, we have resident council, so there's offerings for individuals to be active in, in their family members' care. Do you encourage families to come and help with feeding and being with the family? Do you do that, Mary Beth? It's, it's, yeah. it's an ideal situation when you have a family that's able to come. It's not, unfortunately, the case for all individuals. So if, if you have a family that's local, that's willing to come in to help, we love that. And we encourage them to volunteer at the facility as well. We have um, opportunities for volunteering not only in activities. We have a little gift shop, all these different um, opportunities. We had a, 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 a wonderful lady come in, and her two family members right on board 
wanted to volunteer, went through the whole process of orientation through Wustoff, fingerprinting and all of that, and they're there every day. So there are opportunities for people as often as they want to come. Okay. What have we not talked about that should be talked about in this session today? Well, I wanted to talk about uh, you know reaching out to the community because we have a new program that the we're wellness starting. program. Yes. yes. Okay. Now that's a good thing because it fits right in with the uh, with assisted living. Go ahead. Yeah. So we're opening uh, Wustoff Wellness Program for Center of Excellence for seniors, and we're going to be have a resource center to provide educational material, an intake person to help them uh, navigate through the healthcare system. So if they have a need for a physician, but they're new in town, they can call our number. We can help them through that. But also more than that, we have someone that can listen to them and help them. We also will be having exercise programs, and Mary Beth can probably tell you more about that. Um, but we will also have um, speakers, lunch and learn, and we're going to have, um, we have a lab that's there every day that the community can come and have their lab work done. So they, we're starting to build kind of a center there that community can come in and have those services taken care of. I've heard you talk about this, and I, I think where this differs from some, uh, from some of the uh, local services that are in town that address all uh, uh, the needs of seniors, you're going to address more of the health and uh, medical needs of seniors. Is that correct? Yes, I mean, because we're a medical model, because we're yes. part of Wustoff Health System, we ha we're going to have a, a nurse that's a volunteer that's going to be in there and help them. And we're going to start out two hours a day, Monday through Friday, and that person will be in there and they can call the number and uh, they'll get a nurse so they'll actually understand medical information. And that will tie right in with assisted living. Yeah. It really will. Mary Beth, your marketing director, what else would you like to mention this morning? We've got about a minute left. Well, we have our own outpatient rehab, and part of assisted living should always include um, an assessment of someone's abilities to, find, to determine, really, if they need any physical occupation or speech therapy. So one of the ways that we focus on the health of our residents is for them to be able to maintain the level that, the, the highest level that's a, that, that they can. And one thing I would like to just quickly mention, and we didn't even talk about cost or anything like that, and I don't think that's, uh, that's something we should discuss because uh, I think people need to do that based on their own needs. But uh, having said that, um, many people have long-term health care insurance and do not realize that home care and, time, and many times assisted living care is covered under their policy. We love when people come in, they can bring their policies, and we can help them determine what benefits are available for them and help them access those benefits. Okay. I want to thank you both for thank doing you. the thank show. You. I think it's uh, just wonderful, and I think it uh, brings a new uh, outlook on uh, assisted living care to our community. Thank so you. thank you both for being thank with me today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I want to thank you, viewers, for watching today's episode of Focus on Seniors. If you have questions or comments, please call radio station WMEL at 321-631-1300 for information on senior care and developing your aging plan. You can also go to our website, helpingseniorsofrevard.com for more information on how to learn more about the systems we have in place in Brevard County to help you. Thank you for watching.